The weirdest things Romans did. Ancient Rome holds a mysterious, unique and special place in our imagination. As school children, we learned a lot of amazing facts about Rome that left our imaginations running wild. Imagining the days of emperors, legionnaires and gladiators that called this civilization home. However, all wasn't roses and sweetness in ancient Rome, as there were some details that most of our teachers were too polite to mention when they presented this idealized image of Rome. In today's video, we would be looking at the weirdest things the Romans did during their days. Watch this video to the end, as these weird things are sure to blow your mind. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Now, let's begin. Number 10. Gladiator blood. The Romans were known to have made great strides in medicine and the understanding of the human body. But there was such a belief that was absurd and went way out of the limb. The Romans had the belief that consuming the blood of a gladiator, or even the liver, could go as far as curing epilepsy, which is a seizure disorder. When a gladiator battles to the death in the Colosseum and dies, a vendor would even sell their blood outside the venue to anyone who wanted it. And in the year 400 AD, when gladiator combat became prohibited, the Romans decided to turn to the people who were being executed, especially those who were beheaded, which was to replace the blood of the gladiators, which they believed could cure epilepsy. Number 9. Nero's Third Love Rome had their fair share of crazy, wicked and deprived emperors, but no one comes close to Nero, who might have been the worst. There might be a separate list dedicated to all of Nero's depraved and despicable acts he did, but one of his most cruel and wicked escapades will probably be with his third lover, Sporus. Sporus was a young boy that Nero took a fancy to after he had kicked his pregnant wife to death in a blind rage. Nero had Sporus castrated and forced him to wear women's clothes in a deranged attempt to make him look like his last wife. Nero married Sporus officially in 67 AD, and they were together until Nero committed suicide a little over one year later. Number 8. Left-handed. Being left-handed throughout much of history has come with its share of problems, and ancient Rome was not different as a left-handed person was considered untrustworthy or unlucky. The word sinister had its roots in the Latin word that defined left, but became associated with evil. In the beginning, Romans had no problem with the left side of things, but they eventually came to the Greek way of thinking, who considered the right side to be the lucky side. And this is one of the reasons the wedding ring is worn on the left side of the third finger because it was believed it could ward off all the evil from left-handed people. Number 7. Urine. If you think you have seen the weirdest of facts about the Romans, you are in for a shocker. Imagine another person's urine as a detergent. Yes, the Romans did it. The Romans took their use of urine to the extent that the emperor Vespasian in the first century AD went as far as enacting a tax on urine. And the urine tax came about because it was considered a laundry agent for cleaning. And this made it to be a commodity, like detergent would be today. Urine contains ammonia, which bleached clothes. So it was gathered from bathhouses to be used, and subsequently taxed for its use. The Romans even went as far as using it to clean and whiten their teeth. The ammonia and the urine acted not just as a bleach for laundry, but also gave Romans a pearly white smile. Number 6. 
victims of the Colosseum. The brutal realities that were associated with the Roman Colosseum and gladiatorial combat are no mystery today. The sheer scale of destruction the Roman bloodlust had on not just humans, but also surrounding animal populations is truly astounding. Some entire subspecies of animals were nearly hunted to extinction, and this was to satiate the crowds back in Rome. Lines generally were situated North Africa, Greece, and also modern-day Turkey, but there was a decline in their population due to Roman trappers, who would chip them off to die in gladiatorial games. Not to mention the countless criminals or political prisoners who are torn limb from limb by these animals for entertainment purposes. Number 5. Deadly Latrines Of all of the many things Romans were remembered for in today's age is their outstanding engineering skills. The Romans were advanced in engineering, so they built a lot of edifices and structures like aqueducts and also a sewage system that outlasted the empire itself for hundreds and, in some cases, thousands of years. However, their plumbing and sewage networks had dangerous and sometimes deadly flaws to them. In those days, only the wealthy could afford to have their toilets, and this meant that the rest of the population was stuck either using a bedpan or a cesspit, or they headed over to the public toilets. The smell was as dreadful as you can imagine. Although this was not just the only problem, and this was due to the sheer amount of people that made use of the toilets. And because of this immense amount of hydrogen sulfide and methane gas that would build up in the pipes below, caused flames to shoot out of the toilet seats, which injure and sometimes kill those who were unlucky enough to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And this also included rats that dwelled in the pipes and would sometimes climb up from underneath and bite at some very sensitive areas. Number 4. Good luck phalluses. It was a common habit of Romans to use phalluses, which were penis-shaped objects, as good luck charms. The Romans used them in their homes as adornments, wore them as necklaces, and even went as far as using them as wind chimes. These phallus-shaped good luck charms were used to fend off evil spirits and were objects that represented food, health and good luck. Number 3. Bathrooms Since the Romans were well ahead of their time in dealing with sewage and made use of underground water to move waste away from the public bathhouses, the bathhouses during those times were considered public meeting places, also as they would conduct businesses while enjoying their baths. Public bathhouses had no stalls as we know them to have today. Only a row of places to sit in the room with holes that ran to the sewage system. They made use of sponges, which were mounted on a stick to clean up, and this was a public sponge, as only the rich could afford to have their private sponge. These sponges were washed in a gutter that flowed water continuously down near their feet, which made them ready for the next user. And this was mainly because there weren't many options available at the time. Number 2. Incest and depravity of the emperors of Rome Caligula was known to be in an incestuous relationship with his sister while still having a wife. He also went as far as consecrating himself for his service and appointed his horse as a fellow priest, whilst dainty and expensive birds were sacrificed to him daily. Commodus was known to have played gladiator and thought he was Hercules. He went as far as cutting the head of the Colossus and went ahead to substitute it for a likeliness of his head. He then gave it a club and placed a bronze lion at his feet so that he could look like Hercules, a Grecian god. Carousella massacred his people in cold blood. He went as far as killing his former friends. He even slew a hundred boars at one time with his own hands. He claimed to be the most pious of all mankind and indulged in an extravagant degree of bloodshed, 
even taking the head of four of the Vestal virgins. Elagabos was a pervert, who was also a nutcase. Among many other things, some rumors say that he tried to change Rome's religion and dressed up so he could prostitute himself. Where many of these bizarre Roman emperors could still run a vast empire was because they had extremely small circles of advisors, who were the ones behind the major work done to make the empire up and running. And the emperors ruled through the networks of officials who were most of the time competent for the roles. They helped to keep the insanity at the top. Number one. Prostitutes had to dye their hair blonde. This rule had a lot to do with the Roman obsession with class and social standing. The vast majority of Roman women had dark hair and blonde hair was associated with Gauls and barbarians. Prostitution was legal in Roman society and there were no social repercussions for men who used their services. Now, the Romans brought a law to make sure there was a distinction between Roman women and prostitutes. Since some slaves who were captured had dark hair, a law was brought to make them dye their hair blonde. And this classicist thinking by the Romans was that the prostitute would be more like the barbaric Gauls, unlike the regal Roman ladies. That's all we can take on today's video. Which of the weird things the Romans did surprised you the most? Do let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more amazing and intriguing content. See you in the next video.